Well, I think that that was an invitation for us to come back. Did you hear that, Chris, Alice, and Melinda? You might have missed out on all of the bubbles and the fun this time, but Mr. Finney's got you covered. Um, <laughs> so make for sure that you come out to Cross It and check this out. We're having a lot of fun here. Back to you guys. All right. I love fruit, vegetables, all of that. Tomatoes are my favorite. Really? We might need to see if we can get the hookup. You know, you. we'll hook you all up. We have a lot of different things in store for you guys, and they can catch you out here in a little bit, correct? It's a little intense. I see we have some competition coming up behind us. Now, we said we we're going to be competitive. We can't lose. Uh-oh. Hey, good morning, Chris. Uh, we are very excited to be here. What about you guys? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. We have some exemplary students here who say that they have the coolest school yeah. around, um, especially some basketball players, a drum major, even someone who went to the Little League World Series. Why do you have the coolest school? You got a cool school because all these all the students here, you got school spirits, 5.30 in the morning, everybody showed up. Now, I have to say, they have been dancing since we got here. Is this how you all do it in class, in school? Yes. Every day. <laughs> every, 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 day. every day. Every day. Now, tell me this. You're really close with a lot of your teachers, your, your parents, and the students here. What makes them so cool? Everything. Like, they support us with everything we do, and um, they just support us and everything. Okay? You guys have some cool cheers as well. They're doing flips and all that. You know, I can't do that. I will break something. But I've seen you all do some pretty cool things. You know, you were talking to me about your teachers, right? Why are your teachers so important? They stay in touch with what's modern in school, not in society. They through to 8 o'clock. Awesome. Thank you all so much for having us. I'm learning a lot here, too. This is this week's cool school. I'm learning some sign language. Thank you all so much. Very good, Alexa. Certainly a gem in our community, attracting people all over the state. Hey, Chris, we're here at the chapel, I'm learning. And we are having a lot of fun out here. And we're going to send you out the right way, of course, with one more dance, because we know that this school likes to dance a lot. I don't know if you heard about Hit the Quad. Uh-oh, uh-oh. This is why they're the cool school. Just in case you wanted to know, we'll go ahead and send it back to you. They got He's made his name on Instagram by taking pictures of what he says is the beauty of dogs. Hundreds of people came out today to see Elias Friedman, also known as the Doggist. Friedman showcased his new book at the Arkansas Literary Festival today, and some of his furry friends from the Humane Society of Lasky County tagged along to find new homes. He is uh, an amazing person. Friedman says he's worked with the Humane Society to take pictures and find families for some of the dogs. They will be featured on his blog soon. Well, it was a night to remember for one Mayflower High School student. Demaya has a learning disability from epilepsy and has never been to a dance. But tonight, that changed. She went to her very first ever dance, which happened to be her prom. Officer Tommy Norman with the North Little Rock Police Department was her special date for the night. Officer Norman was, has known Demaya for a long time from patrolling her neighborhood. And Demaya requested that he take her. So her mom sent an email to the department to make it happen. Another brand new brewery has opened in downtown Little Rock. Rebel Kettle Brewery opened their doors for the first time yesterday afternoon. Hey, I think so. I'm with you though, Todd. I'm, yeah. You know, yeah. we're here. Yeah. We're here. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. It takes all that pollen and dumps it on your car. Oh my goodness. Green Another slime. car wash. You're going to wash my car? Think on that. While he thinks on that, it's Easter weekend and many people are out enjoying Easter egg hunts across the state. Oh, it keeps me up at night. Opening up opportunities for those who can't afford it. <laughs> like the purpose of this Saline County Boys and Girls Club chicken coop, which helps feed families of members in need. Last year we sent home over 1,600 eggs out of this chicken coop. Directly affecting families like the Burks. We grew up, you know, trying to figure out if we were going to have lights on. We didn't have any activities to do where I lived at. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot down here for kids to do anyway. So, I mean, for the Boys Club, it just gives those kids a chance to get out there and, like I said, get them off the streets. Burks is a single father. His seven-year-old son and daughters depend on the temporary assistant for needy family scholarship. I'm not physically able to get out there and throw the football with him right now on most days. So, I mean, it gives him a way to go out and be active on days that I can't get out there with him. As of this year, that scholarship is almost completely gone. At Burks Club location, they went from 324 scholarships to only giving 15 this year. As for the money, 
it was put somewhere else. There was some legislation that was passed in the spring that um, and they had to take money from some pots to make one pot and that was for the drug testing of some recipients of, of federal uh, assistance and that that money was unfortunately 530,000 of that was taken out of our pot of money. Burke says that decision is simply unacceptable. Let's worry about them and let these kids have what they need to have to get by in this world. Very strong words from many parents just like Burks. If you want to donate to your local Boys and Girls Club, we'll have that information on our website at katv.com. Back to you. Archives dating back to 1942 of a B-17 bomber that crashed and shared it. Now more than 60 years later, a life-size memorial sits where it fell. I, I was always afraid to come because I thought I would feel just such deep sorrow and think about the deaths more. Paula Corrado lived with her grandmother and was 18 months when her father died in the crash. She brought me home and within an hour or so of me being home with her in Bisbee, she, uh, the doorbell rang and it was people saying that my dad had just died. Thanks to a curious deer hunter, she now has a piece of the plane. We have a deer camp right across the street. And so my, my stand used to be here where the plane is. And so anyway, I was raking the other day and I found this metal part on the ground and I started digging it up and I just felt in my heart that this was part of the plane. Oh, I love you. This is an exact replica of the B-17 Flying Fortress that crashed right here in Sheridan. The day before it crashed, it was condemned never to fly again in the continental United States. When it crashed, they blamed the pilot and said there was no known mechanical or structural problems. Overwhelmed with emotion, Corrado is now at peace. Wow, thank you, Arkansas. Thank you, Sheridan. Thanks all of these people. They just give you a strength in their heart to yours. It's to mine. It's just wonderful. And I, I feel, I feel the boys. And For more on Paula's story and the Grant County Memorial Park, go to KATV.com. Back to you.